Hi everybody, welcome back to the Gallagher Shots YouTube and podcast channel. We are back with another match preview. It's like being back in Europe, boys, the thick and fast. Um, after the 4-1 defeat against Arsenal, that's all we're going to talk about that game. Uh, we'll move our attention to the FA Cup. We're facing Blackburn. Um, it's on Tuesday night, under the lights at Ewood Park. Um, but before we jump into everything, here's a little message from our sponsors, Magpin. The Gallagher Shots Match Preview is brought to you by Magpin. Magpin are the go-to site for high-quality, unofficial enamel pin badges of Newcastle United players, legends and retro kits. For more information, visit their website at magpinbadges.bigcartel.com. Yep, so as I mentioned, uh, after travelling all the way down to North London and travelling all the way back on Saturday night, now everybody's got to make their way all the way over to the northwest of England, all the way over to Blackburn for a Tuesday night kickoff uh, for Ewood Park against Blackburn. I believe it's live on BBC for everyone in the UK. Um, it it's on via play for me, so everybody else. Well, it's on BBC as well, because actually I get BBC one uh, in the Netherlands. So if I want some English commentary, yay, get to watch <laughs> English commentary. Not that I don't watch it on IPTV anyway, so eh, whatever. Uh, it's 7.45 kickoff. Uh, for all you lovely folk in the UK. Uh, Blackburn is 16th in the Championship, not doing too well, but as we all know, this is the Cup League form. Flies out the window on that one. Um, Chris, mate, a lot's been said about this Cup. This is our last chance at salvaging something for this season. Do you agree? Um, no, I, I, well, no, not really, because you've got to look at we're still in contention of a uh, contention of some European spot. We're still, yeah, we're still in there around the mix. I, I know there's a little bit of a gap forming now, I think it's around with seven points between us and Man United at the moment. Um, mm -hmm. but and those but also have got a game in hand as well. But th there's still something to play for. Um, obviously, the the result which we saw against Arsenal is a little bit of escape from that coming up. Hopefully, um, the lads can get a result against Blackburn in the Cup, and Blackburn have done pretty well in the Cup so far. Um, so some high-scoring games in there. But it's just a bit of a fall from grace that you've talked about. It's like being playing European games again. Um, <laughs> going from the San Siro <laughs> to Awood Park, yeah. which is fantastic, mate. But yeah, nah, I think there's still plenty left, left to play for this season. Yes, obviously, we're out the Carabao Cup, which obviously was just won by Liverpool today. Um, but still a long season ahead of us. Well, it, it's a year to the day for, for our final, obviously, in, in our trip mm. to Wembley. Um, some obviously, some, some like something to kind of grasp onto for this. Obviously, it is Blackburn and they are League One. Uh, sorry, Championship opposition. Sorry, Blackburn fans. Uh, you're not League One anymore. Uh, you did you did get back into the Championship. Um, but they have lost the last five FA Cup ties against us. Um, and they've lost seven of the nine in total FA Cup games against us. So, the cards are quite clearly stacked in our favour, Daryl. Um, the last mm -hmm. game was a 4-2 home victory for us. Um, I think that was a third round replay in 2018-2019. Yeah, well, yeah. So actually, it was down at Blackburn that one. That was a, yeah. we drew the, uh, yes, the sorry, home yeah. game uh, nil nil. Uh, no, sorry, we drew the home game one one, and we went down to Ewood and beat them four two. Um, quite an interesting game from memory. I remember watching it on TV, um, and we opened the scoring really, really early through Sean Longstaff uh, in the first minute, and then it seemed to like back and forth a bit. Went two nil up, and then they brought it back to two two, and then. Very quiet second half, and then in injury, well, not injury time, in added time, second half of added time, um, we started really brightly and, and got two goals in as many minutes through um, Iose Perez and Hoffman, of all people. So it tells you how long ago it was. Um, we have met them a little bit earlier as well. Our last game against Blackburn was the 1 0 home win in the EFL Cup, and that was back in September of 2020. Um, a 1 0 win for us with their forgotten man. Ryan Fraser bagging the only goal in that game. Um, and it's funny because I've not really got a lot of detail on the games for this one, but I have looked and I've found some little factoids from Newcastle United in round five of the FA Cup in the Prem. Well, I've got the last 10. I know it's the last 10. So in, in the last, we're unbeaten in the last eight. And the last time that we lost, funny enough, was away to Blackburn. Um, and that was back in 92 93. That was a 1 0 loss. Um, and we've played them two times since then and won both of those games as well. Um, and 
you know, we, we, do, we seem to do quite well at this point in the competition. Like I say, we've, we've won the last eight fifth round fixtures. Um, and we do, you know, it, it's, we tend to go quite far. Like we, we keep going, sorry, once we get past this stage as well. So we've had um, the semi final in that year, I think, when we got through. Um, and then, you know, going back to the late 90s, you had a semi final appearance at Wembley in 99 2000, and then obviously the final appearance in 98 99. So it, it does all add up. And um, yeah, so it's going to be interesting to see how we go into this. And I think it's going to be an exciting game, actually. We've got some, um, we've got some uh, demons to get out of that closet after Saturday. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's a funny one, Andy, because obviously with Newcastle, <coughs> we normally struggle to get out out of round three. But like Daryl says, like if we can get out of round three, we normally don't do don't do that badly, and we normally get to like a quarter or a semis final. And that's what you like to see. Just a little bit of a cup run normally gal- galvanizes the fans a little bit. When you know in seasons gone past, maybe the league form hasn't been the best. Um, you like to think maybe the cups are the one thing we can hold on to. And we saw that last season with the Carabao Cup. That was the you know, the the thing that kind of, I think, maybe he's pushed the players on to maybe he's boost our performance towards the end of the season to get that fourth place finish, which we ended up with. I think they saw the, the, that cup run to go, hang on, we want a bit more than just being you know, mid-table. And it, it, it spurred them on a bit to, to get where they wanted. Yeah, similar to what Chris said, really. I think you, you can't just say this is all to play for for the season because... Otherwise, what's the point of us watching any of these other games if, if all we're caring about is the cup? But yeah, I agree. Um, it was quite hard watching the Carabao Cup final uh, just today, thinking, you know, seeing how happy the fans were. And we were clearly the better team than Man United that season. And we just couldn't do it on that one occasion. Mm-hmm. So it will be heartbreaking to sort of have a, a another cup where we sort of get nearly there. So I, I almost would rather we just lost now than got to another final and lost in front of the world's population again. Andy, I'm, I'm <laughs> still pissed off about that cup final, man. It's a year, uh... it's a year ago, and I'm still pissed off because I honestly thought we were going into that. We probably were favourites going into it. And do you know what? I thought we would have gave them a good run for the money, you know, and took it to them. I, I thought it was going to be end to end, and, and we would have got the, the better out of Man United, but we just didn't turn up on that day, did we? Just played them pissed the off, time, man, didn't we? Yeah, just yeah, played them at the wrong time. Scoring, like, there was like against Carrius. There's like a two week period in the season where they were better than us and we were on a bit of a slump and we played them then. Yeah. And it yeah, was just yeah. the worst possible time. And then obviously, like, what was it, two or three weeks later, we played them in the league and absolutely destroyed them. Right, it was them, like, yeah. where was this when we were all sat there crying <laughs> in our expensive Wembley pints? But uh yeah, so yeah, great opportunity. Um I'll go into Blackburn a bit more later, but um, you know, it, it's nice to get a sort of easy draw, quote unquote, uh, mm-hmm. easy draw when the, the state of the draws we've had this season. Obviously, we had an easy draw in the last round of the cup, which I keep uh, with, with Sunderland. I keep forgetting that that was actually a cup game. It just felt like they just gave us a derby for the crack just so we could play them. Um, <laughs> would you? But, would, oh, yeah. Sorry, I'm, I'm giving them away. Your job, yeah. I'm thinking of taking over your job, yeah, Scott. Would, would you? I'm, I'm just going to ask you as a question because obviously the. Yeah. the the draw was between Blackburn and Wrexham. Um, would you have preferred Wrexham or did everybody want to dodge them like a bullet like I did because I just didn't want to become a whole spectacle of this Hollywood show that Newcastle are going to be involved in? Totally, totally agree with you there. I would have been shit scared of being the giant killing. I don't want that. Mm. We know we had, we've had it before with bloody, you know, BBC will never let us forget bloody Herified back in the 70s and that, that goal just keeps getting mentioned and played every single time it comes about probably get played on Tuesday night on the BBC um, and will. nah I just didn't want didn't want it no thanks Wrexham are probably a better team than them as well I think as long as, as long as we don't play a Premier League side it's always going to be dubbed as a giant killing I mean even yeah. the last game obviously the you know the Sunderland Newcastle you know history and the, the derby was mm. played to death as well but if you're not playing a team in your own league, it's always classed as a as a giant killer, no matter what. Obviously, the lower the, in the, last round was the much position is in the league, it's is always like mm. it, it's fight even more. But no matter what, obviously Wrexham would have been it would have been a lot worse than what this will be. But I can say tomorrow that BBC are probably going to run a half hour special on Blackburn on the history. They're going to run a, a special on Alan Shearer on how he what he did for Blackburn and then moving to Newcastle. You, it's going to happen. And then Chris Sutton's going to be sat in the BBC studios with Alex Scott, probably harping on about how he'd love it if Blackburn beat her. And then it, it's just going to be all, it's it's going to be that. And it's fine you expect it because it's, they are the underdogs and that's what, that's what happens in these sort of things. Um, 
you got to take nothing away from them as well for doing that because you know they rightfully are in this to to do it. They did it last year. I think Blackburn beat Leicester last season mm. to get to the the quarterfinals. They, you know they they beat them two one. I think it was. Um, and and everyone was like, ah, oh, the, the you know the giant killings again, and we expect it to happen. You know, people expect it to happen again this season just for 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 what would happen. It's much better I being think... the underdog, though, isn't it? It's much better being the underdog going in these well, look games. Look at the PSG. Like... Exactly, that was going to be a yeah, yeah, like... season. Like everyone ripped off, and we totally took everyone by surprise. Mm, both home and away with PSG as well. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. just look at Ali McCoy. Ali McCoy was absolutely buzzing that yeah. that um, Newcastle were keeping um, PSG out of the game until obviously. Ninety yeah. what fourth minute or what was a penalty? Can we stop going through past traumas? You've already I'm mentioned. No, <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? We're taking a step away from stats and just feeling it full of misery. When Stan Collymore scored in Liverpool. Yeah, <laughs> well, I tell you what. I tell you what, Andy. Talk to us a little bit about Blackburn. What can we expect? Because it's been a while. It has been a while mm. since we've played Blackburn or, or since we've featured them. It's probably been the Championship season, so it's probably been seven years. Um, or, or, well. A, Obviously, the, apart from that third round replay in the FA Cup, um, yeah, so it's probably been six, seven years since we last played them. So, mm-hmm. we're entering the unknown from a fan side of things. So, what, what can we expect? Well, I think the thing is, Blackburn fans would also say it's a complete unknown. If there's one word to describe Blackburn at the minute, it's chaos. I mean, <laughs> just, just in January, they had this story where they thought they'd signed this lad from the MLS. Uh, and the Athletic reported that instead of clicking submit form, they clicked save and thought they'd signed him. And then the transfer window what? passed. And that, is like, wow. that is true. There's That's a chap brilliant. called uh, Duncan Maguire, who they were thought they were signing from Orlando. So they thought, get in, job done. And then the manager at the time, who was obviously John Dal Thomason, was saying, where's my new striker? And they were like, um, we haven't bought him <laughs> because of an admin glitch, wow. which Amazing. is what he said. But then the reports were saying that they clicked the wrong button and all sorts. So... Yeah, so that manager's I'm, obviously I'm left. sure I've done that on Football Manager before, you know, where you, yeah. you, you well, click yeah. next, 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 and it's like, well, where's my player on the bench? It's like, you scroll through, and it's like, why didn't that confirm button? I'm sure I clicked that button. What's happened there? Yeah. So, wow. yeah, unfortunately, they couldn't save Scum and get it back, so they, they messed that up. The manager left it a bit of a blaze of glory and said, the owners promised me X, Y, and Z, and it didn't mm-hmm. happen, so they've got this guy now, John Eustace, and he's the chap who was sacked by Birmingham to get Rooney in, which obviously went really, really well, but he had... Birmingham up in sixth um, so I think there's a little bit of hope that they've, the owners have maybe made a good decision but reading the comments and looking up some stuff online on Blackburn the fans are just kind of, very similar to how we were under Ashley where it's like what's the point of doing this anymore we were you know a bit of a fallen giant we've obviously had the heights and now we're just floating around in the doldrums not really doing anything um, I didn't they were one of the 12 founding members of the football league as all you didn't realize so they've had a right fall from grace um, just sold their star player Adam Wharton to Crystal Palace uh, in January, uh, young lad, his brother still plays for them in defence. Um, and just some t- thoughts on the Venkies, because you might not realise they still own them somehow. Wow. Do you remember yeah, the yeah. advert? Do you remember the chicken advert? They chicken released, advert like, in the dressing room. With like Richard Dunn and that. Like, yeah. <laughs> if you need to just sum up how bad the Venkies are, yeah. just watch that. But the, yeah, the, the absolute shambles, really. They had this whole issue um, with, uh, with this player they were meant to sign. They've sold the best player. It's basically, for them at the minute, it's just rubbish. But it's like you said. It's been going ongoing saga, hasn't it, with them and, and, and the Venkies? Oh. Like, like there was said, another, similar what we went through, Ashley. There was another story I saw where apparently one of their owners turned up in 2013 and he got attacked by a snowball. Well, someone threw a snowball at him, not attacked by a snowball. <laughs> <laughs> the snowball came to life the and attacked him. Came to life. Um, oh, God. He got, someone threw a snowball at him and he's never been back since, apparently. That just sums it up, really. So they're a bit of a shambles. It's a real shame because obviously we've got the connection with Blackburn uh, and I've, I have managed Blackburn on Football Manager. And I can tell you the owners <laughs> are rubbish. So, um, so I think they'll just similar to what we were saying about Bournemouth the, the other week. I think they'll just see this as a free hit. Let's sort of just sack the the home form off. We'll go and try and do a giant kill and get the place rocking. And you, there might be almost a bit of a window into the past for them to see, like you know, can we compete in a big game again against Premier League big boys? N- nothing to lose, really, is there? I, I see. Remember, didn't they do sorry. the double against us in the championship in that in our promotion? Yes, they did. Yeah, they, they six points from us that game. Um, horrible because I remember I was on holiday in the summer of that, and some bloke comes up and says, like, Chess with the six points. And I was just like, You still got relegated, what like, <laughs> you've got relegated? Like, what's the... <laughs> like, we, we love doing that, don't we? Like, 
Yeah. Getting hammered oh, by yeah. teams that would get relegated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, you meant, yeah. I think you the thing is, though, it. what goes down my favour as well is that the fact that they're not even selling out the grounds these days. Um, on Mike Ashley, obviously, apart from the season where we we'll give 10,000 <laughs> season tickets away, um, <laughs> which people have thrown back on faces. Like, but um, I'm sure they're only half filling the stadium these days. Which really means, obviously, when we go down, we're taking seven, eight thousand fans. It's, it's 7, quite a lot, isn't it? There we go. So seven thousand fans. Um, it's going to be like home and there's one away pub. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> well, when, I, when, I, when I was trying to find the injuries, because I clicked on seven different websites and they all had different listings, um, I went on the Blackburn Rovers website and a pop up came up as soon as I clicked on the site with tickets are still available in the home end for. Yeah. Oh, wow. And it's like I think that averaging about fifteen thousand at the minute. It's not that, selling like. out like, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's funny you mentioned Andy got those adverts. That is one thing we can give Ashley credit for. We didn't see like Matt Ritchie in a Sports Direct uniform <laughs> doing a Sports Direct advert. So, the giant mug. You know, if, if if anything, the current owner's got you know Isak doing an Adidas advert. Do you know what I mean? Like that. That's the yeah. that's <laughs> with the goals advert. So you know we we can thank Ashley. He didn't get any of the players in for there. Um, I mentioned injuries. Uh, the only the only two I could find was um, Ryan Hedges, who had only just come back. I think he lasted 15 minutes at the weekend and had to come off. Uh, he's going for a scan. They're touch and go. Apparently, he's one of their top school goal scorers. Right. Yeah, um, he is. And, and yeah, he's come back from a bad hamstring. Uh, sorry, a bad hamstring injury. But like I say, he, he went off. He's done a Joe Willock, came back, got injured, and went off again. Um, and then the other one was John Buckley, who I think has been on for a little while. Um, so I, 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 it's got nothing to play. And again, I, I don't know who uh, Buckley is. I apologise for that. But uh, yeah, from our side, I don't think we came out of the game at the weekend with any fresh worries. Um, Dubravka was obviously the surprise. He was ill, although I think tin file hat. I mm. personally think that was a, a 12 month. You've got to play one game in 12 months to keep your work permit uh, for Karius uh, thing myself personally. Surely so if that was we'll the case, then Dubravka would just, just be on the him. bench. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Is that like you to save to Brad Cadego, but that he's Diego. not being dropped? Stop, <laughs> that Give him a rest. Boyle had away, mate. You're absolutely <laughs> yeah, maniac. Yeah. Absolutely maniac. Go. Um, <laughs> but it was good to see Joe Willock back, Chris. Uh, obviously, on on. Uh, well, when was it? It was last night, wasn't it? God, I've I've, yeah. I've blocked it out my brain. It was such a bad, <laughs> bad performance. But um, is this the sort of game where you get a bit more minutes out of Joe Willock? Maybe he's not starting, but maybe he's given. You know, you had what twenty minutes last night. Maybe he's look at giving him a thirty minute or even a full half if we're winning the game quite comfortably. I think you only risk him if if we're in a, a, a business where we, we may need him. I think if we're winning the game, probably won't even bring him on. Mm. Um, I think it's one of those things. But yes, he probably does need minutes under his belt. But we've seen it with Joe Willick before. He's a fantastic player, but he does have these sort of injuries where he'll just not necessarily rush back because he's been obviously out for a little while now, but. Prior to that, when he his first game back was Dortmund, I believe, which was a shock when yeah. he, he appeared against Dortmund. Um, but I don't know personally; I, I wouldn't risk him because I, I think so far in, in the season and at this point in the season, we've got to be very clever what we do with these players. If we force them back and, and give them more minutes than, than which are crucial to us as a football club and, and our, our performance and our results, then what's the point? Like, like, honestly, there's no point at this moment in time. Yes, if we're in a position where we have to take that risk, I'm all for it. Um, I, I'd be more inclined to, to to think of what would happen with the youngsters because yeah. we saw already how they'll obviously play a couple of young ones over, over the last few games, whether or not they get a start. I think Carries will start as well. I think Carries will get, will get the run at Roland Dubravka because, albeit, yes, we was conceded four goals against Arsenal. He wasn't at fault for any of them, and he, and he made a couple of decent saves. Did all right. Yeah, so I think Carrie should start. But yeah, with with Willick, there's no point rushing players back. No point whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Daryl, mate, um, obviously Mm -hmm. the other question of a player coming back at the weekend was Isak. Um, We did see him come off, and and obviously you wouldn't know this because you were at the game, but the commentators, it looked like Isak wasn't the original plan of being the substitute, and it was Gordon originally coming off. Right. And then it changed to Isak pretty quickly. Um, Mm. And it was after Isak had switched with Gordon to go out on the on right. the wing. Um obviously we're not reading anything into that with an injury or anything, but would you see Isak just starting again and maybe he's getting another 60, 70 minutes? Do you think the plan all along was maybe to give Isak an hour and then pull him? And it was just the commentators getting that sort of thing wrong uh, on the TV. 
Uh, what would you do? Would you just start him again and just keep him going as he has been? Yeah, I think so because it, you know we've mentioned it the last few weeks now that you know the presence of Isaac in the side is crucial to how we you know if we're going to have a meaningful attack that we we desperately need to have some form of recognised striker in the ranks, especially when we're playing games like this where we're going to need to you know get get some goals in the bag early on. Um, and like, like you say, give him another hour. Just give him another hour. See how he goes. Maybe he can get a goal in him, and then you know we can hook him off and and get him rested in the game. You know, Chris mentioned it there with the Joe Willock thing as well. Again, it's just it's 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 bringing these lads back into the the, the fold and getting them back up to speed properly as well. Um, and obviously, we know Joe Willock's injury was a little bit more severe, and I definitely agree with wrapping him up in cotton wool to a point in, in terms of just gently easing him back into into like playing and match fitness. Um, but yeah, Alex Isaac. Just give him, give him an hour and um, bring him off. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Andy, mate, obviously the big debate is uh, the, the the Dan Byrne, Tino Livermento, who starts, who doesn't start. Mm. Obviously, I haven't you know, heard that one before. What's that about? <laughs> I'm not going to get into it, mate. We haven't got that much time left. Um, I'd be here all night. It's Sunday. <laughs> um, no, but, you know, Tino didn't do too badly uh, against Saka. You know, he, he kept up with them on pace. Obviously, this is going to be a completely different game uh, on Tuesday. Um, but obviously, when Byrne came on, he got an assist, he did clear a ball off the line. He didn't do too badly himself when he came off. Is it looking more like Burn is probably going to be a better impact sub when those players are maybe tiring a bit? <laughs> you know, obviously we can't take much from it. But um, you're actually going down that line, sub. That's a wow. that's a reach. <laughs> is that a reach? I, I mean, know. he literally was an impact <laughs> sub against Arsenal. Yeah. So yeah, I'm asking the questions. That. I'm not making the statements. No, no, <laughs> I don't have would ever have heard that sentence ever. But oh, wow. this is what we do. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we if, if, I'm if asking Eddie the questions. Ha- we we really should worry if Eddie Howe saying to Burn, like, right, get yourself on there and use your pace. <laughs> like 60 minutes in. Exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah. Hey, a ball off the line after been getting done on the wing. Was so it his ball like no. ended up on the line? It was. <laughs> That's what I've just said. <laughs> Let's not. No, I mean, all that kind of worms. <laughs> Would would you would you just play it as it was at the weekend, or would you would you switch it back up? Or like Chris said with the youngsters, would you give Hall a start and then you know waste that thirty million that he's looking to spend oh, and play that one game that's going to make that transfer permanent? What would you do? Yeah. Well, yeah, if we ignore all the weird contract stuff with Hall, which apparently is a thing, how we, we we don't really like it. Yeah, exactly. I'll Get the tin hat out. Pass yeah. a tin hat down. Um, then, yeah, there's there's some thought that how really doesn't rate him and he doesn't even want to trigger is very easy to trigger permanent option, apparently. So I don't really get that. But if that wasn't a thing, I'd be saying start Hall. It's a perfect opportunity for him, really. I, I felt sorry for Livermento because obviously he'll have been chomping at the bit to get in ahead of Burn. And then he gets in and he has to go against one of the best 1v1 wingers in the world in that game. Mm. So it's like, and, and obviously one of the problems Burns had is that he's had no support on that left-hand side. And Livermento's just had the same issue, really. I think he did all right. And I do think he's the future at fullback, but probably as a right back. Um, I think that yeah. was always the plan with Tino. So yeah, I'd like to get Hall in there. Wouldn't mind seeing Lascelles get some game time. We might get... You know, Kraft and Dummett at the back da, 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 again. You never know. <laughs> uh, obviously, worked really well when we did it against Man United away in the cup. Um, so yeah, opportunities for people. Um, I think when the young ones have come on, they've looked all right. Um, and we've just seen again, not to bring it up again, with Liverpool and the Carabao, you can back youth and they can do a job for you. Um, it's just really how well coached those young ones are with what Eddie Howe wants them to do. Because obviously, we know he asks for an awful lot. Um, and just piggybacking uh, onto Daryl's point, I agree about Isak. I think if you're going to play youngins, you need some kind of quality, experienced player up front. Experience, well, he's only like 22 himself, isn't he? But mm-hmm. yeah, it's, so it depends on the balance of the team. Like if if we're if we're playing, you know, a decent front three, then yeah, play Hall or play Youngin. But if you're going for youth in a midfielder at the back, then you need those top players up front. Because um, I, I do think with the way we're playing at the moment, we're having to score two or three goals a game to to get a result. Um, and even then, it's sometimes not enough. So we, I think we've just got to be positive and, you know, uh, not rest everyone. Having said that, though, you wouldn't be shocked to see a revert back to what it was like when, when both strikers were injured and see Gordon up top yeah. and somebody like yeah. like Barnes on the left, Almiron or Murphy on the right. You wouldn't be shocked to see that, depending on, on oh, where yeah. Isaac is at. Then using Isaac like he... as similar to Dan Byrne as it. 
<laughs> later on in the game. Miggy, Miggy didn't look 100% against Arsenal. Nah. Like, it, it just didn't look like he was running fluidly at all. So I don't know if there's something there with Miggy. I don't, mm. I don't know. We're, we're recording this, obviously, before Eddie Howe's press conference, as we always do. So, you know, something might... Well, I say something might come out of that. Who, who knows the Eddie Howe press, press conference? <laughs> well, I mean, you could yeah. say Miggy's, you know, 100% and then he's out for three months. So we'll, we'll see what happens there. Um, One thing I will say about the youth, obviously, with a quick turnaround of this, in the way we know Eddie Howe trains the players, he won't have had time to maybe train those youth players, like you've said, Andy, to 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 get up to speed for what he wants in this game. So I think if any youth players are starting, you're going to be looking at the likes of Miley, maybe he's Hall at a push. You know, obviously Tino, who is also a youth player, realistically, but he is a first team player. Um, so I think I don't think any of them will start unless they've been training week in, week out with. I don't know if any of them have been um, to any extent, and the, and then not feature for the youth youth team Joe White. as well. Joe, Joe White, um, obviously Joe White. featured against. Yeah, Bournemouth Joe White well. maybe is a, is a shout, um, and and it may come down to if Eddie Howe wants to rest any of the first team players for uh, is it Wolves next in the league? It's Wolves, right? Yeah, we've got Wolves yeah. at the weekend, yeah. um, which is a big game because you know they're 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 the, one of those teams in around that little mini league that's starting to form for that six seventh mm, place today as well. That. And they mm. did win today, yeah. Um, so we'll see what happens. Uh, it'll be it'll be a fun one to watch. Um, like I said, it's on it's on BBC, so everyone will be able to watch it, which will be nice. Um, I believe everybody in the group chat is going down. Um, I think everybody in the world it, is going down. There's a car. There's a car full. I'm not. I, I, I'm I'm not going. I, I haven't got any loyalty points, so I'm not going. Um, no. Oh, it's trip. Be an expensive trip for you to go to. Black an expensive trip just to go to. Just go, yeah, I mean, I made, I did, I did it last season for the for the final, even though I didn't have a ticket. But uh, yeah, it's 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 totally different. I'll wait for the Save final. I'll I'll, I'll fly over Save for then. Um, yeah, boys, we'll we'll move on to our predictions. Um, obviously, tough one to predict is an FA Cup fifth round uh, against a Championship side or a, a lower league side. Uh, Hang on a second, we've got ref watch. We've got oh, ref yeah. watch. oh, yes. This is the only one that's <laughs> like, you can't make me prediction without ref watch. Hey. How are we, Right. Which okay. ref are we watching this week? Is he bald so, or has he got hair? He's got hair. That's all that matters. <laughs> Usually so, means he's um, the ref. <laughs> we have, for this game, we've got Jared Gillett, who obviously, as we know, is a, a native Aussie. Um, used to referee in the A League. There's a very famous uh, clip doing the rounds on socials where he has conversations with VAR and you can actually hear him. Normally, well, at present, we don't hear the conversation between referees and officials live in game. But over in Australia, their rules are slightly different, so you can. And there's a very famous clip from about oh, three or four years ago now. Three years ago, yeah. Yeah, when he was in Australia and you can hear everything going on. Um, very eye-opening. It was something that really advocated the use of VAR. Anyway, this isn't a VAR thing. So his third game of the season, this one, and... He's already, sorry, for, with Newcastle United, in it? And we've already seen him, sadly, as we went out of the FA Cup to today's runners up Chelsea. Not the FA Cup, the EFL Cup to today's runners up Chelsea. Um, but in the last round, in round four down at Fulham, we had him. So he's got a win in the bag as well. Um, season stats for the man. He's got 18 games in all competitions. 80, 8-0 yellow cards and three reds. He's brutal. So he's finally getting his ban. <laughs> Does well, count in the FA Cup? I don't know. Well, <laughs> he's, he's not banned yet. One of these questions where we we'll always get asked and we don't know, and there's always somebody that'll send a, either a DM or a comment saying, you were wrong you about this. Like, <laughs> I, I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. We need, to, think we if... need to set an email address of Chris. You were wrong at Gallagher Chats. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hashtag. <laughs> uh, hashtag you were wrong at GS. Um, I think if Bruno had picked up his yellow card in the Arsenal game, then he wouldn't have missed this game. Because uh, mm. somebody DM'd with that, you wouldn't have missed this game. Then his two game yeah. ban would just be for Premier League games. So your guess is as good as ours. <laughs> no, find out in the first five minutes on Bruno two foot. Yeah. <laughs> he's been mid man. He's been mid recently. Like for, for a player that that was always destined to get a yellow card. He, yeah, he's controlled that that emotion, that anger a little bit. I think he was very lucky against Arsenal. Awesome I think he could have easily yeah. picked up a yellow there. Um, but he he still was it six games in a row now. We've been expecting this yellow card to come. And he's I think he's in that. I think he's got another eight to go before it wipes out as well. <laughs> he's got full Gary Lineker. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. 
Was there any more, Daryl? I, I, I don't know. No, that's it. That I was think we interrupted Sorry, you there. That's no, 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 that's, all, no that's, that's, all, that's it for RefWatch. Until next week. That's a wrap. <laughs> I love RefWatch, me. Like, my favorite thing on this channel. <laughs> we've made, we've made an intro and everything for it. There'll be a graphic popping up on your screen. For those listening on audio, go back and watch it on YouTube because there's a graphic and everything because um, it's well worth it. Uh, there's no sound for it yet, but uh, we'll get Daryl to record something. You can you can sing and dance. I'll put I that need, up as well on the screen. Jingle, like. <laughs> <laughs> That'll come up on screen. That's worth the subscription price alone, oh, even though it's free to subscribe. <laughs> um, right, we'll now come to our predictions um, because Ref Watch is over. Um, Chris, mate, what is your prediction for this one? Um, I think this will be a tough one to watch. Um, but for the opposite reasons, uh, what we saw so against Arsenal, I think we'll, we'll be knocking on the door. But I think we might struggle to put it in the back of the net. I'm gonna go with a uh, scrappy 2 1 to Newcastle United. Okay, Andy, mate. Uh, well, these, these lot have only kept three clean sheets all season. They uh, concede 1.63 goals a game, according to the internet. So I think we are going to score. I think I think we'll go pretty. Point three six of a goal. Uh, yeah. It's yeah, it's a new rule. Stats. Uh, yeah. Stats Jared Gillett. Jared Gillett brought it in uh, from Australia. <laughs> um, no, so I, I think we'll score. I think the issue is obviously just the other end at the minute. They've got this chap Sammy Smodix who's got ten goals this year. So they're not. They can score. Um, and we're so weak at the moment that I just I can just picture it already. And like we were saying before, I can see the BBC getting really excited about it. But I think we'll go strong up front. So I think we'll get three or four, but we'll concede two in the other end. So I'm going to just go, it's going to be a ridiculous game, 4 2 win. Daryl, please make it easy. <laughs> make it easy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try. Um, well, actually, I'm not because we have to remember that <laughs> there has to be a result achieved on the night. And it'll go straight to extra time and penalties if required if we can't get it done in 90 minutes because there's no replays. Um, but no, I think um, I'm going to go 3-1. Three, 3-1 one. Three, one to Newcastle. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. Uh, yeah, I think um, I think we'll do a clean sheet. Even though what Andy said, I'm just going to totally contradict what he said. I think we'll do a clean sheet. I think, I think just for Carrius, I would like to see Carrius have a clean sheet because mm. I don't think he's had one since 2018. Um, you want to so... keep Botman away from that team sheet as well. <laughs> <laughs> no. um, yeah, I think I'm going to go three 0 I think I think I think we'll we'll score a, a ton of goals. Uh, well, three of them. That's a three nil. Yeah, I think I think we need to get Isak on the on the score sheet as well because I think he's looked yeah. a bit off the pace just coming back from injury. I think, but once he gets one, I think you'll 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 get a couple. But uh, yeah, I think Isak. So, When's Dan Byrne coming on for you, Scott, to make his impact? If Dan Byrne will come on in the 69th minute. <laughs> right. Yeah, head one in to make it 4 2. No, uh, yeah, no. It'll be, uh, yeah. No. <laughs> I think it'll be Isak, Gordon, and then Dan Byrne, last minute goal. Oh, yeah. There you go. Happy with that, Andy. Aye, right. scored in the last round. Why not? Good. Exactly. One, one, one goal up until the final, and then he's going to score the winner. Scream at that one. All right. <laughs> Boys. Anybody want to add anything before we wrap this one up? Yes, just, I do. do you know what is? Oh, sorry. I like that one. <laughs> sorry, bit, sorry. Go with um, are you going to dance, are you? No. Are you going to dance? I'm going to just build on something that um, Andy mentioned earlier when he was talking about the owners. And I think I think I saw it on Instagram last week. They've got a little plan. Um, I think we might see something on Tuesday night. Oh, they're launching the tennis balls, aren't they? Apparently. Yeah, they're going to oh, ten yeah. tennis balls. Aye, these in Sky Sports the tennis adverts are doing me. I didn't like the need to stop. <laughs> 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 I think in the 12th minute or something for 12 years. I don't know what it, I think it was 12th minute anyway. It's to mark the amount of time that the Venkies have owned the club, I think. So bring your tennis balls, boys and girls. Get involved. <laughs> Will it be like the paper plane ones at St. James's? Do you remember that? Where two paper planes <laughs> hit, the, hit the paper. <laughs> Go on, like the amount of things that you've got to take to a football match and these days, obviously, you've got to bring your ticket. You've got to make sure you've got ID with you. And now you've got to bring tennis balls as well. Jesus <laughs> Christ. Be a phone in case it runs out. <laughs> you can get through. Uh, well, what Did I was going to add that John Dal Thomason's not in charge because uh, I kind of was kind of hoping for like a little yeah. I, was, I thought it would have been nice to with him still be in charge, but oh well. Yeah, it is what it is with that man. I just the thing which I'm slightly worried about. Is, <laughs> excuse me. Um, we're getting players back to fitness now and um, back from injury. I'm just I, I, I don't know what it is. I'm just I'm, it's very the depressing side of his way. I'm just thinking 
just don't get any injuries, just no key players injured because mm. it's one of those games where we saw it against Sunderland uh, where, where Joe Linton just gets injured off, off a daft little push and that's what it is. Yeah, You just you hope that you get through this game with the result and also with a, a full fit squad. Bill of health. Uh, that's exactly what we need at the minute because you can just see it coming. It's typical Newcastle United this season where we'll, we'll, we'll get a result but then there'll be an injury to somebody. Like it'll be ridiculous. But the thing that's crossed, I'm completely wrong. It'll be a sack of Daryl's favorite club celebration. Somebody will actually be injured. Who yeah. did that? Was it was it uh, Granite Jack did that the other yeah. day, wasn't it? Yeah, he did. I did you see that? Yeah. <laughs> he had um Jabby a lot to win. Having kings because he thought he was genuinely injured. Oh, what a freak. <laughs> what an absolute freak. <laughs> it, was the physio, it was the physio who was worried the physio ran up <laughs> I saw that, yeah. um, right boys we'll wrap this one up uh, thanks very much for spending your Sunday evening with me and thanks you for watching or listening if you're listening on the audio um, if you're watching this on YouTube just scroll down and hit the thumbs up that's all we ask for and while you're down there hit the little subscribe button uh, to become a subscriber to the channel and hit the notification bell if you'd like to be notified when new videos go live on the channel. Uh, if you want to go one step further, you can become a member. It's $2.99 a month. That gets you early access to videos, exclusive access to other videos, as well as access to the Telegram and the Discord server. We're looking to get a Helldivers group set up uh, so we can play some Helldivers with members because a lot of we've got that game and it seems to be uh, the in, in thing at the moment. So uh, we're trying to get some bug killing going on between everybody uh, and the members group but you weren't expecting this from a newcastle podcast were you um, <laughs> exactly um if you're listening on the audio be sure to give us a five star rating um i thought we asked that gets us in up those charts on uh, spotify apple music google whatever it's called these days on google and all the other ones because there's too many podcast charts but five stars five Spotify, S's, whatever they're called. Uh, just give us just give us a five rating. Uh, unless it's out of 10, then give us a 10. Uh, <laughs> the maximum, please. Full marks, please. Full marks. Uh, full marks, please. And leave us a comment below what your <clears throat> prediction will be uh, and how you think the game will go uh, on the YouTube channel, uh, on the YouTube video. Thanks very much. Uh, boys, thanks for this one. It's been fun. Uh, go and enjoy the rest of your Sunday. I think Daryl... And Chris are going to go and play some FIFA clubs. Uh, I'm going to go and, uh, I don't know, watch a telly or something. Andy, <laughs> enjoy your water and your storm trip, bottle, mate. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> we, will, we will see you all in the next one. Have a good one. Ta-da. Ta-da.